Hey friends, John here with the Paddles Up Experiment. If you're new to this and you haven't, this is just day seven. <clears throat> uh, go back and uh, watch day one and you'll find out a little bit more of what this is about. Uh, basically it's the two hands are our paddles and we use these for a lot of effort, egoic effort. They can be used for good, of course, to create and to use our hands to do a lot of things. If you have them, you're blessed. Uh, but it's also symbolic of what we do in our own effort. And so when we put them up, it means we're letting the current of life, the current of the Spirit take us where we were always meant to be. And that's in the current now. So let the current now take you. It's basically what it is in a nutshell, but there's so much to this heart-centeredness. And by the way, watch for a new uh, set of series and calls that we're going to be releasing. If you want to be a part of, it's called 18 Inches Down, and it's on our site. We've begun to craft that, and then soon you'll have a link. And what it is, it'll be a weekly calls to talk about going from here to here heart centeredness 18 inches down and uh, if you want to read a little bit more about it go to paddlesup.fun and you'll see it in the little tiled box there on the front page click on it and then you'll see some of the description and the link will be coming soon and uh, we'll go from there so today i wanted to share what's really been being cultivated in me and i hear about this from so many others uh, around the world is that we're being really challenged right now to be more present than ever and of course this has always been a challenge for many of us that like to stay out ahead that we like to forecast ahead we like to we're visionaries and so we like to plan ahead uh, if you're a business owner or just a real planner of any kind, it's, it's a challenge for you because when we are being presented with the now and, and really challenged to stay present and live and dwell in the now where everything is, all of life is, sometimes that can be um, really difficult for those that their mind just wanders and goes and goes and goes and just is constantly trying to figure something out or plan its own way. And although our mind, our, our brain is good, okay, our brain is good. Our mind is outside of our brain and the thoughts are outside of us. And so when the thoughts are wandering around out there, we could it could be a collective thing. It might not even be your thoughts. It's just something collective that you're picking up in humanity. Somebody that walks by or something that's in your sphere. Someone, someone that's around our vicinity, you could be picking up on those thoughts. And so this is why sometimes we have crazy thoughts, what we call weird or strange or just flat out awful kind of thoughts. And uh, keep in mind, it could just be collective. And, and it could be the conditioned part of us that's led to believe something all, this, all these years. And so it begins to form and take shape in many different ways. It could also be some of these thoughts that come up, some type of herbal, <laughs> for real, some type of herbal formula you're taking, some type of herbs, uh, that's cleansing out some of your lymphatic system in the brain and it will begin to stir the pot up and you'll start thinking hallucinative things and sometimes you just got to look at that and say, okay, I realize what's going on. Uh, the muddy water, so to speak, are being stirred in my head and I'm just being cleansed and detoxed. Lots and lots of different reasons why. But I think one of the main things is, is that, you know, we get thoughts from the collective, but we also, that's just part of our mind makeup. And this is why we take on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ transcends our own egoic nature, and then it casts us into the present now in spirit. Spirit is always present. It's all around us. We also have a collective spirit that's keeping us alive. But there is a spirit 
the, the spirit of love that surrounds our life, whether you realize that or not. And we're made of love. So we're always, always engaged in the now, in the real us. It's just our egoic self tries to take us out of the presentness, out of the reality of what is. And what I'm being challenged with is, is seeing the answers that are always present in the now. There's, there's answers at any given moment right here, right now. And they're leading us on a bunny trail or rabbit trail, so to speak. There's like cookie crumbs or breadcrumbs that are laying all around us in any given direction when something is being highlighted in our life. Like, for example, if, I, if I'm really present, then I can see that everything is actually okay in my life. Like, I'm not in harm's way. I'm in relative peace sitting in this vehicle. Me, me, relative peace means there's a lot of chaos that's around in the city, right? Any given city. But there's a peace that goes on in the present moment right now. And if you start looking at the things in the moment, you'll find that there are answers like peace and safety right here, right now. Uh, and then so many other things like God has been trying to reveal something to you, but your ego is keeping you at bay. It's keeping you out to sea. It's keeping you away from the shoreline, so to speak, of the current moment or just the current flow of the current that you're in, which is the current of spirit and love. And so these are the things that are really meaty and where the rubber hits the road because they're things that don't, they're not talked about much in the religious world in the sense of, you know, church or um, what I like to call religion land. They are in certain circles, but most of the time those circles are labeled new agey or labeled deceptive or evil or some other thing because people don't understand or they don't want to go there because they're too afraid to leave their own egoic structures, which could be, in fact, uh, have some good elements in them, right? It's If it's serving you well right now or what you think is serving you well, then there are certain elements that are good. But if it's keeping you out of the present moment, then it's not serving us too well. So meaning that you can learn a lot in those circles. You can learn a lot at your job. You can learn a lot in your church. You can learn a lot in your own uh, cathedral, wherever you're, you, you go to fellowship, wherever you go to worship or whatever. You can learn a lot, but how much of that is conditioned belief system aside from the real truth in the current now? You know, it's truth is present. It's present tense. And what I'm learning and discovering is that the more I allow and let go of that egoic confine and constriction that always wants to take me away from here, then I start to realize that, whoa, wait a minute, I have more peace accessible to me right now than I ever first imagined. It's, 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 peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the, it's the peace, the prince of peace dwelling on the inside internally. And it's interesting because a lot of things will take us away from those very things that we always desire. The real us desires these things. It's just, it's because of what we're made of, but it's just that we want to leave the moment because we feel it's boring. Because nothing, quote, nothing is happening. But in reality, everything's happening because God's got us. We're being held. We're being absolutely 100% held by love. Whether we, again, whether we realize that or not, you and I are being held by love. Doesn't matter what you think about yourself. Doesn't matter what we feel uh, we deserve. Doesn't matter if we feel that God is a God of judgment and punishment uh, or or that we are deserving of a bad life or trial after trial because we've done some horrific thing. And so we beat ourselves up all the time in this egoic structure that is filled with falsity. It's filled with falsehood. It's filled with illusion. And all of those things that I just mentioned that 
we beat ourselves up with are in fact an illusion. They're not real. They're not true to who we really are and who God is. See, if you really want to know what God is like, look no further than the love that you know you have inside. Look no further than the loved ones that love you. Look no further than when you fell in madly in love with someone. Look no further than the love that you have for animals or the love you have for your children or the love that you have for anyone or the love you've experienced. And you say, well, I haven't experienced love. Well, I beg to differ. Everyone has experienced some sort of love coming at them or through them or to them at some point in their life. Whether you realize that or not because you're buried under egoic traumatic conditioning is a different story. And so I just look in the mirror now and say, okay, I'm going to make mistakes. I have made plenty of mistakes, but I'm expanding. I'm growing. I am becoming more present than I ever have before. Although I'm still expanding in that. I'm still growing in that still. Um, it's being unveiled to me that, whoa, wait a minute. Love chooses nowhere else, but here love has decided to live nowhere else, but here right here in the present now, in you, through you, and for you. And so living in this present moment, there is no greater thing to do than to live in the moment. And how do we do that? We still ourselves and we become aware of what's around us. There's trees, there's birds, there's my breath, there's, there's this safety, there's this peace, there's this all-knowingness that's all around me. And all I have to do is look at nature and creation and say, okay, I know you've got me whether I want it or believe it, feel it or not. And what I mean by want it is sometimes we push it away because we feel that we have a better way or a better idea of doing things through our own egoic efforts. But our, the real us wants it. The real us enjoys love. The real us knows that it's real and true and, and everything that we are made of. And so some things to ponder for me and for you um, in this moment, because I guarantee everyone's being challenged with this right now. Everyone is, whether again, whether they realize it or not. And uh, that's what I'm being challenged with is just knowing that there's answers, knowing that there's answers. All answers are right here, right now. They may not be what you want to hear and they may not be what you have uh, put your expectations on. And anytime we have an expectation that doesn't come through, then we feel like God is abandoning us or, or uh, God is not coming through for us. But it's just not true. It's just what, have our, what is our own ego ha has, has built by way of expectation? And that comes through conditioning. And the conditioning has to have an expectation to say it, it's got to be this way or else. It has to be this way. I mean, after all, God, you want to give me the desires of my heart. So it's got to come through this way in this time frame or else, you know, my, my rent's going to be later, my mortgage payment or, or my child is, is, is going downhill fast. God, you've got to do something. So if you don't come through for me, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> or what? What are you going to do? You know, become bitter. Anytime we come bitter, that's ego winning the day saying, I've got you away from the now because now I've got you in resentment and bitterness and I've just removed you from the present tense, the present moment of where everything is taken care of according to what's best for us and our highest good. See, and oftentimes people, if you have a religious conditioned mind, you'll think that that Oh, I got to suffer now. I got to suffer the rest of my, I got to go suffer and do something I don't, I can't stand. That's not what it means. The highest good for us could very well mean something that we really enjoy, something that is, is uh, a desire of ours, right? But it may just not be in the time frame or the way we thought it would be because after all, our ego only knows so much and it's very limited. 
and its understanding. But spirit knows all in the present moment. All right, that is day seven. We'll see you on the next day.